Hard drives are now cheaper than ever, so there's no excuse for not keeping your precious data backed up. Drobo's affordable storage solutions use data aware tiering to protect against single or dual drive failure. Traditionally, this has been at the expense of speed until now. The company's latest Drobo products offer the protection of RAID storage array coupled with modern lightning fast Thunderbolt and USB 3 connectivity. Welcome to IFTIS Tech Corner, where today we are looking at the Drobo 5D. The Drobo 5D is, in its most basic sense, a 5-bay modular RAID enclosure capable of reading from 5 drives all at once. Like all RAID enclosures, the main idea behind the Drobo is to store and access large amounts of data at rapid speeds, usually with enough redundancy to account for one or more of the drives within it failing. Even if one of these drives failed, you'll be able to access your data and continue to work as normal, while the failed drive is swapped out. Basically, it doubles as a way to both access your files quickly and protect them from hard drive failure. Drobo's products have always been a bit unique from other RAID solutions, however, providing a much simpler and faster way to set up the device, swap out one or more failed drives, and expand the storage with larger drives. Perhaps one of the biggest highlights of a Drobo is the ability to easily expand your storage volume using disks of different sizes within the same array, without affecting your data something which we cannot do with standard RAID 5 units. With the 5D, Drobo have taken everything great about their previous products and updated the package with a pair of lightning fast Thunderbolt ports, as well as high speed USB 3. They've also added a unique feature called data aware tiering, which lets you use a MSATA SSD to speed up your read and write speeds by using it almost like a cache that will speed up access by keeping commonly used files and thumbnails on the SSD itself, similar to Apple's Fusion Drive. More on this later, for now let's get stuck into the box. So taking a look inside the box here, we have Welcome to the World of Drobo, and this I believe is an accessory box, yep. So if we have a quick look inside the accessory box, Got Drobo written on the top there, and here we have a quick user guide. So it says it tells us to go to the Drobo website, download the Drobo dashboard, insert our drives, connect the data cables, power on the unit, and then format the Drobo and create our volumes. We'll have a look at that shortly. We also get some Drobo stickers. We have a USB cable as well as a Thunderbolt cable, which is quite nice. We don't usually get the Thunderbolt cable bundled in alongside Thunderbolt drive. So that's a nice touch there. So we've got everything that we need to get going. And finally, we have the actual power brick itself. It's quite a substantial power, power brick. It's probably around the size of the Xbox 360 power brick. And we have both European and US power cables to attach to that. So that's the accessory box. Let's get this out of the way. And the actual Drobo unit itself is within here. So let's just pull this out of the box. So here's the actual Drobo itself that I've just pulled out of the box. So it comes in this nice little carry bag here, which you could probably use for other things. And if we were just remove it from the bag itself, there we go, there's the actual Drobo. Slightly heavier than I was expecting, but it is a metal enclosure, and so it's very sturdy overall. Now there's not too much to see, it's a typical Drobo simple design with a magnetic front here covering the slot loading drive bays. The front plate also gives us a quick guide as to what the status indicators located next to each drive highlight. We also have vents surrounding the entire cover so air can enter the front of the unit and travel through the hard drive bays. Along with the status indicators next to each drive, we also have power, capacity and usage indicators across the bottom of the Drobo 5D here. Despite the simple look, the Drobo also serves as a high protective enclosure with thick metal walls and shock protection features to preserve your data in case things get shaken around a bit. Now on the rear of the unit we have this nice large exhaust fan, so in essence cool air will enter the vents surrounding the front plate travel through the unit and the hot air will be pushed out of the back of the unit. Also note with moving parts comes noise. I'll mention whether the fan creates too much noise later in the video. 
Added to this, the inclusion of the dual Thunderbolt and a USB 3 port around the back allow for a super speed connection interface as well as easy Thunderbolt daisy chaining, and the Drobo's design becomes just about as close to ideal as you can get. It even includes Thunderbolt and USB 3 cables, so you don't have to buy one separately, which is out of the ordinary considering most other Thunderbolt devices don't come with the actual interface cable in the box. The Drobo 5D provides perhaps the easiest drive installation and removal experience I have ever seen. I have some 3TB Western Digital RED drives here which are recommended for use in NAS environments and certified compatible with the Drobo at the same time. Although you can install LEDs, it's recommended to install at least two drives to begin with and we can then add further drives as and when we need to. Bear in mind, since we can install disks of various sizes within the same stack and at the same time have one disk redundancy to cover us against drive failure, you'll find that your highest capacity drive within that stack will be unavailable as it will be used for data redundancy. Drobo have a handy capacity calculator over on their website where you can mix and match drives to ascertain exactly how much of the array will be available for storage. I'd highly recommend popping along and taking a look before you purchase your drive so you know you have enough storage space for your particular needs. To install a drive, just press it into the enclosure until it clicks. And that's really all there is to it. This is a breath of fresh air. Many RAID systems require drives to be mounted with screws or bolts. The Drobo drive bays do not, which makes them a simpler and faster solution than most competing products. To remove a drive, just pull the tab on the side and the drive will pop forward allowing you to pull it out. It's that simple. To finish out the simplicity of the system, Drobo has chosen to use a magnetic metal cover for the front of the device that also pops on and off without metal fasteners of any kind, so it's all as simple as it possibly can be. As we'll see later in the setup, the Drobo 5D allows you to choose between a single or dual drive redundancy option. Put in simpler terms, this means that it can offer protection in the case a single drive fails, allowing you to remove the old drive, add a new one without losing any data. For even more safety, you can also choose to set it up to compensate for two drives failing at around the same time. The best part of all this is that you don't have to rebuild your entire RAID array if a drive fails. Just pop out the old one, insert the new one, and wait for the status light on the new drive to turn green, and you're good to go. To complete the hardware side of the install, Drobo have included the ability to add an MSATA SSD for a feature known as data aware tearing. I'm using a crucial 128GB MSATA SSD here, although any drive 64GB and over should work just fine. Now this is a new feature introduced with the Drobo 5D, as well as a smaller Drobo Mini. It serves as a way of speeding up your data transfers by using an SSD. The MSATA SSD is inserted into a special slot at the bottom of the unit, and is used by the Drobo as a sort of cache, enabling the device to operate much faster than it could if it were using spinning drives alone. Think of it as a way to turn the Drobo into a giant hybrid drive, similar to Apple's Fusion Drive. This should speed up overall performance. Before we go ahead and connect the drive up, just a quick word on battery backup. Arguably one of its best features, the Drobo 5D includes a powerful built-in battery to protect against data loss in the event that you lose power. Once it detects that the power has been cut, the battery kicks in, almost like a mini UPS, allowing the Drobo to finish writing whatever it needs in order to prevent data loss or corruption. So with the drives now installed into the Drobo, we now need to attach the interface cable, I'll be using Thunderbolt, to the rear of the Drobo, and then to the system you'll be using alongside the Drobo. Once connected to a power socket, simply flick the switch on the rear of the Drobo to power it on, and give it a while to boot. Now while the Drobo starts up, it's probably a good time to quickly go over the status indicator lights on the front of the unit. The Drobo 5D includes several sets of blinking LED lights. First is a set of five lights down the sides of the drives here that show green, yellow or red. Now these lights reveal whether a drive is installed in a certain bay and whether or not it is healthy. It also includes a light to show when the Drobo's internal processor is busy down the corner here, when data is being transferred to or from the Drobo, and a set of lights along the bottom which show how full the Drobo is. It even alerts you when it's time to add more storage or remove a few files. 
Now these lights come in especially handy and provide great at a glance overview of all aspects of the device's status. Now before we can actually use the Drobo and for these lights to actually correctly show the status of the drive, we now need to load the Drobo dashboard and actually set the unit up. Before we can use the Drobo, we need to download the Drobo dashboard from Drobo's website. The installation is quick and easy and it's a good idea to create a Drobo account and register your device at the same time as installing the software. The software is required to set up and use the Drobo and is as easy to use as the unit itself, providing a simple and painless way to manage your Drobo, check its health, shut it down, see what drive is installed in each bay and more. Once installed, the Drobo dashboard would automatically search for and locate your connected Drobo units. Before we can start moving our data onto the Drobo, we need to create a volume, another unique aspect of the Drobo 5D and all other Drobo units I can think of is the way it handles volumes. When setting it up, you can choose a volume size of up to 16 terabytes. That means when storage capacities increase and drive costs fall, you can easily expand your Drobo without modifying any of its settings. As long as you don't exceed 16 terabyte worth of drives, you're set. When drives evolve to sizes greater than the 16TB limit allows for, Drobo can release a firmware update to increase the limit. Once set up and in use, the dashboard gives us plenty of information about our unit, and we can change a variety of settings even down to how bright or dim you want the front indicator lights to be. The experience of using Drobo Dashboard is unlike any other disk utility I have used, for one simple reason. I didn't feel like a nerd while using it. In fact, it was so seamless I was hardly aware I was using it at all. There's some real power in that level of simplicity and it really is a joy to use because of that ease. All of these features contribute to the best single feature that the Drobo has to offer, extreme simplicity and ease of use. This is Drobo's real strength. They're so easy to set up, upgrade, replace drives in and use that anyone who can read a traffic light can use a Drobo. They're dead simple and to steal a phrase from Apple's book, they just work. Now that we've covered the main features of the Drobo, does it actually perform as well as it's supposed to? After all, what good are all these features if the end result is as slow as paste? Fortunately though, that's not the case. Bear in mind, I'm using three drives in this Drobo at the moment, so I'm not expecting my speeds to be as fast as they should be. Once I have all five drives loaded into the Drobo, my speeds should, in theory, be much faster since the data will be read or written across all five disks simultaneously rather than only three disks. Nevertheless, I found data transfer to be very fast and I had no problem editing ProRes 422 high quality 1080p HD stored on the Drobo 5D using Final Cut Pro with ease. No stuttering or slowdowns whatsoever. Pretty impressive considering video editing and rendering are some of the most intensive tasks you can perform on your computer. Now we'll cover more aspects of the Drobo 5D in further videos as I continue to test the unit, including a full speed test with five drives, along with simulating a power cut to test that built-in battery, for example. For the moment though, I'm just going to come right out and admit that the Drobo 5D is not the most advanced storage device available. It's also not the fastest or the cheapest. Actually, it's kind of pricey at $850 with no drives at all. It is, however, my preferred Thunderbolt storage device and the one I'm most likely to recommend to others. Although it's not the fastest, it's fast enough for even video editing and that's more than enough for most users. Above all else, it's simple. It requires no extra knowledge and it just works. Can you get a faster or more advanced drive for the same amount of money or less? Yes, you can. But you won't find a simpler or more foolproof solution for users from varied technical backgrounds. That's why the Drobo 5D has earned so many awards from a large number of retailers and large scale companies. As an external storage device, I highly recommend it. Please feel free to like this video, it really does help me out. Don't forget to subscribe though, as you'll automatically be entered into my 2013 monthly giveaway. Click the logo above for more details. See you soon on Ifti's Tech Corner.